Hey guys, you're about to tune in to Crying in My Car, a podcast for teachers. Of course, I'm James Jean. I'm joined with my good buddy, Devin Siebold. On today's show, we're going to talk about a teacher. She's getting money raised because she needs a prosthetic leg. That's actually good news. Then we're going to end things by talking about if you're a teacher at a wedding, what are the top 10 ways that you can actually tell? Don't forget to tune in. Crying in My Car starts right now. Hey everybody, this is Crying in My Car, a podcast for teachers. My name is Devin Siebold, and I am a former teacher and also a comedian, and I've got my good buddy, Mr. James Yan. What's going on, everybody? He's a uh, comedian and a parent, and we are sponsored, obviously, by Board Teachers. Be sure to follow us, follow them, and uh, subscribe to the podcast. Share it. Five-star ratings are much appreciated. We do we do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, on the interwebs, we see a lot of crazy things. We're going to jump right into it. Oh, I like it. I I saw one today that um, I get and I don't. I would love your input on this. I'd love other people's input on this as well. There was a meme that was going viral. It wasn't really a meme, just a picture with a quote. Uh, and it was a 25-year-old millionaire, startup millionaire. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of these startup millionaires. Yeah. And his quote was on there, and it was being hotly debated. He said, drop out of college. You don't have to go to college to do what you want basically just said uh, it's not for everybody and people ran with this and mm -hmm. people were like oh, oh yeah. you don't need college yeah college is overrated college is not something that's for me Ugh. okay let slippery me slope it is a very slippery slope and as a parent let me tell you something okay. i've heard this before mm -hmm. yeah i too listened to college dropout by kanye okay yeah. I, I hear him tell you <laughs> over and over again you don't need to go to college college is not for everybody that's something we had talked about. That's why we would love to see the trades go back in right, schools. Right, we did discuss yeah, that. We discussed it. So let me just say this. No, it's not a guarantee that you will get a great job if you go to college. But if I'm a trapeze artist and I'm really good at what I do and I think I may not need a net because I'm never going to fall, it's also nice to have one. Oh, yeah. Just in case, And right? just so you know, the Ringling Brothers College in Sarasota would be happy to have you. Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and you can learn about trapeze yes. and also business. Okay. Now, if, <laughs> now, one of my kids did come to me and say, hey, Dad, college isn't for me. I don't want to do it. My only question as a parent is, hey, I support you. But my question is, what is your plan? Yeah. What are you going to do if you don't want to go to college? I was going to be a manager at Hooters. Okay, all right. That's a, My that's... mom did not endorse no, that. No, she did not. I'm sure she did <laughs> But not. I really wanted to be one. Gotcha. Yeah, Which it... is funny because most of those girls are working their way through college. Yes, they yes, are. Yes. They offered free college tuition assistance when I, I worked that. at Hooters. It wasn't yeah. for me. I was a cook. Yeah. Uh, it was just for the girls. Oh, that's and weird. I've seen your legs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you should not be. I'm going to go a different way. Okay. I get what this guy's saying. Saying. But. I think college is more than just the class. It is more than just the credit, more than just the degree. Ah. I think college is necessary because college taught me for the first time to be responsible for on yourself. my own. Yeah. I had to go eat at specific times. If I didn't go to that specific time, I didn't eat. That's I didn't right. have extra money. That's right. I, I, I just, I was like, oh no, mm -hmm. I overslept. And now I don't get breakfast. And it's like, nobody woke me up. Oh, yeah, it was up to me to set my alarm and get up at a specific time. Oh, I missed out on this particular test. Uh-oh, how do I? Oh, my mom can't call up to the school. No, sir. I, I have to go on my own yes. to the professor and and confront things that I was not ready or had never been in that particular situation. That's right. I had to confront responsibility. You sure do. I had to have adult conversations. I had to schedule meetings and, you know, study, study sessions. I don't know enough about this. Okay, when is everybody studying? Oh, we got something at the library on two? At two. Okay, well, I work at two. Well, maybe I can go in a little later. Um, you know what? I'll have to call my boss. And, I mean, these were real-world things that I had to... You were on your own. Yeah. That's it. And it was the first time I was on my own. 
and now there was a safety net. I didn't have the bills. Of, I was staying in a dorm. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't have the. Oh, I need to pay this on time. I need to pay that on time. But there was still the uh, the responsibility of time management and the pressure of because you had a scholarship. If I don't make the grades, I don't get this scholarship. I don't get this scholarship. I don't go to school. My very first semester. Yes. I was on a Bright Future scholarship. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I had the 100% Bright Future scholarship and I'll never forget, I got a call from my mom and she goes, hey, I just checked your grades at school and you have an F in psychology of the personality. And I did because there was only uh, one test that we took in the beginning and mm -hmm. one test we took at the end. Yes. And it was hard. Man. Oh, yeah. Psych of personality. That was the hardest course. And it was one of my first courses I took and I was not ready for it in no. college. And she goes, just so you know, we got a warning letter from the state mm -hmm. that your scholarship may drop. And I was like, oh, there's consequences to bad grades yeah, here. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, okay. And they're, they're, they're going to cost me tens of thousands of dollars in the future. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to get that grade up. You know what? Yeah, I feel inspired. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I suddenly, and I started working harder, harder. started doing actual, I said, oh, I have to study here. Mm -hmm. Col uh, high school was such a breeze for me, Got you it. know, and, and it was, it was, uh, it, it was too easy. Yeah. And then when you got to college and it was like, oh, this is real. Yes, right. You know? And all the courses are condensed. Yeah. It's all on you. No one's calling you. You can walk in late. No one's going to get mad. It's all on you. Yeah. yeah. And that was the thing that I had to kind of accept. And I will say that it was college to me was about the experience. Okay. College to me was less about the the knowledge that I was able to pick up. I mm -hmm. picked up some great knowledge. I was going I went for secondary education social sciences. I think I was a better teacher. I was better prepared okay. for the classroom environment. Absolutely I was I was uh more I think I you know people who go for education degrees I think last longer in the workplace because they're it. like, oh yeah, that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. This is going to be this way. Yeah. And you'll have to deal with this. But I also think that it was so much about friendships. It was about Social, time management. Socialization. It was about yeah. going, oh, I have a test tomorrow at 8 a.m. Maybe I shouldn't go to Daytona Beach tonight and yeah. stay out till 3 a.m. It was about mm -hmm. learning to be an adult. Yes. For the first time. Absolutely. Because we've had this conversation already about, hey, if you don't teach, if, if the kids aren't taught in any kind of situation how to fend for themselves socially, they're just so awkward nowadays where they don't know how to handle anything by themselves. Yeah, it's all And you online. hinder their development and growth that way. So you... Yeah, you you need that in your and, life. And one of the weird things that I I thought was kind of fun is I liked college too because one of the things that obviously the court case the the court case where we just did away with uh, bringing in um, uh, basically uh, race based acceptance yes. into college we just did away with that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I found to be really awesome was uh, the reverse of the race-based acceptance for me. Okay. I know this sounds really weird, but I can it, see it. It does. I can see it from a different perspective. I grew up around mostly black friends. Yes. With basketball, the schools I went to, mm -hmm. the communities we lived in. I was actually around more black friends gotcha. than white. And then when I moved in, they had me around white surfers. And I was like, well, these people are different. <laughs> <laughs> and like my roommate was like this white guy oh, and he was like yes uh i was like you want some hot sauce no and i was like what 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 is wrong with this guy you don't put a hot sauce on your cornflakes unbelievable <laughs> i mean there was little honestly it was kind of like a i have to learn white culture that is brilliant <laughs> man. i know that sounds really weird but like they put me with white surfer guys and they had a different lifestyle than me. Absolutely. And and I was the basketball guy. I was going to play basketball. My basketball friends came by and we were, you know, we had a different style, different, Absolutely. different vibe. Yeah, man. You know, and um and it was weird adjusting, you know. But that's the funny thing is, is that I could I, that's why we have more diverse colleges. Yes. And colleges striving for diversity. Absolutely. Is because a lot of people going to college have not been around other, other cultures. cultures. Yeah. And it's not even just black, white. Everybody always says black, white. It's not just I'm that. I'm talking like different religions, different backgrounds. I mean, there's there's a lot of people that see other people dress a certain way and go, what is that? Um, well, yeah. guess what? In college, that's going to be sitting next to you and you're going to have to work together on a project. Yeah. And you're going to go, oh, 
I understand more yeah, about and, you and your culture. And yeah. guess what? Hate starts to dwindle yes. when you find it. Oh, I opened this door to somebody else that I didn't yeah. know anything about. Yes. Because you learn, hey, man, as much as we might have and diff- like be different, mm-hmm. we have a lot in common as just people. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, in college is where you make long lasting relationships and it teaches you uh, uh, how to network also. Right. Because those people you go to school with, they go on to do other things that you may be involved with when you get out of college. Like, hey, man, I need a venue to do this certain show. At, and I know my my buddy over here, he was a theater major and he ha- he works at a theater now. I can call him up. Yeah. Like, that's another thing, too. Yeah. People forget, but college is the biggest network. network. Working. Yes. I can't tell you how many times people go, oh, yeah, we hire alumni from here. Yep. We hire this person and this person recommended you. Yes. And uh, trust me, your college like roommates, your college people that you go with will be in charge somewhere later. They are going to do good things. Yes. And you can ride that coattail. Sure can. All the way to the top. And when you find a person that went to your school later on in life as an adult, you have an immediate bond. Yeah. My son works for John Hopkins, like I said, in Baltimore, and he has fellow Gators there. Mm-hmm. And they let you know, you're a Gator? Gator for life! Yep. Yeah. So yep. I'll, it, yeah. I'll never forget one of my uh, friends. Uh, shout out to uh, Zach Alfont, the uh, lawyer that helped me get custody of my children. Hey, hey, clap yeah. that, hey! I went to school with him. They we were buddies, and I, gotcha. I, I said, hey, man, I'm going through a divorce. He goes, I'm a divorce attorney uh, specializing in family law, and I could help you get custody of your kids. And I was like, you were my best friend. <laughs> I always thought you were the greatest person I'd ever met. Gotcha. And, uh, For a non-black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? We played on the basketball team together. Okay, he, got it. Yeah. He, he, got, he got a spot at the cookout. Okay, he, he, he was at the cookout. There you go, man. <laughs> but nice. no, I, I honestly had the, the, the networking there for a lot of things that I've done. Absolutely. And man. Um, man, college, high school, high school less than college, but mm-hmm. college for sure mm-hmm. opened so many doors. So when they say, don't go to college. I, I think it means don't waste your time on learning things that, that are outside of what you're passionate about yes. and your dreams. Yes. But there are things that you pick up. Little yeah. things that you go, oh, I didn't know this, mm-hmm. and this culture now I'm exposed to, and this environment I'm well aware of, and now I'm responsible. Yeah. And I think that that's the valuable lesson college really provides for the small fee of $170,000 a semester. It's well worth it. You know, it, it is. It's an investment. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I don't know. I think we could like buy away racism with that money. We could. You know, it's we like, could. hey, don't be racist. Here's $100,000. you are like, you know what? I love everybody. I, you know what? <laughs> you guys make I don't a need good to go point. to college. I just, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone's great. Uh, it's weird how that works. Uh, all right. Let's jump into the teachers in the news, shall we? Community of Bueller. Bueller. Shout out Bueller. Uh, raises money for a teacher to get a prosthetic leg. This is in Wichita, Kansas. The community of Bueller is stepping up to support one of its own. Uh, this small Kansas town is hosting a raffle. All the proceeds go to help a local teacher, uh, Miss uh, Gortzen. I don't know if I'm saying that. G O E R. T-Z-E-N. I think I said that right. I think you are. Uh, is a fourth grade teacher and is recovering from a rare form of bone cancer. Says she was a runner. Uh, last year, thought she had hurt her leg running, didn't get better. So apparently went to the doctor. Unfortunately, it was bone cancer. Uh, it happened mm-hmm. in her knee. And uh, now they are raising money for the leg that she lost to fight the bone cancer and getting her a prosthetic leg. Now, I'm going to, that's nice. Come on, man. That's, Absolutely. Yeah, come on, man. That is huge. Yeah, it is. I think that is, is awesome. I, I hope that, you know, all this goes well. Uh, and also, shout out to you. Apparently, they, they said they're looking to raise $18,000 uh, through this raffle. And, uh, you know, hopefully people support it and they're able to. I think also there's one thing that I'm going to add that frustrates me so much. What is that? Why do you not get a prosthetic leg after undergoing a bone cancer where they have to amputate your leg? It should be automatic. Come on. You know, I, that's the one part that I sometimes see. I love these GoFundMes. I love these, you know, medical help is, is always needed. I love communities coming together, Mm -hmm. but sometimes I go, will we ever get to a point in our society where communities don't have to come together to raise money for a leg for somebody that went through cancer? 
I mean, it's just so frustrating to see stuff like that. There has to be something in place, some kind of program that we might not be privy to. And if you guys listening right now know of programs like that, let us know so we can pass that on. Yeah, absolutely. There maybe, has to be. Maybe help her out. But, uh, man, I just get I get so frustrated when insurance doesn't cover that kind of stuff. And, uh, and you know, not only just insurance, but, uh, you know, you, you would think, hey, we're taking your leg. Okay, will you be replacing it? That's a great question. I know it sounds crazy. Funny Why to say is that, that not part yeah. of it. If you take my leg, do you not give me another one? I yeah. know, right? Yeah. It's it's like okay, we're doing open heart surgery on you. We're going to take your heart out. And it's like okay, and <laughs> well, well, you know, we're still waiting for the GoFundMe to come through. True, <laughs> uh, but you know, in the meantime, in the meantime, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna take it. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen Indiana Jones? <laughs> we have a guy. <laughs> we have a guy. <laughs> He's going to come in and yeah. hold it. Yeah. And, uh, He's not you know, wearing shoes. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so I, I get frustrated with that stuff. But I hope the community comes together. I hope there's a positive outcome. Yeah. And sorry she had to go through that for sure. Absolutely. Uh, Massachusetts adjusts, adjusts licensing rules amid a teacher shortage. Now, we have discussed this at length. Mm. A lot of states just dropping down those requirements to be a teacher. This one, you no longer have to take the state's exam in order to be a teacher. So they're they're going to do that. They're creating a provisional license uh, and they're also wow. going to hopefully hire more special education, English as second language, uh, and create a new license for pre-K teachers of students with disabilities. So they are reducing the licensing requirements. Now, ah. we've seen this. This one caught my eye for a little bit of a different reason. Okay. This particular line. The board also voted to create a new provisional license for school nurses. Because they're understaffed in districts. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't mm, you know, I, <laughs> I don't want to get to the point in society where nurses have a provisional yeah. license. Like, we don't have enough nurses. Have you heard of Band-Aids? Because <laughs> it looks like you're somebody we want to hire. <laughs> Ma'am, he's missing a leg. I know. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've prescribed this eight-year-old marijuana. <laughs> Medical. <laughs> That's not how this works. works. Yeah. <laughs> I just, and I, I don't think we should skimp when it comes to the nurses, qualifications of nurses. Health. And, Bro, I mean, my child is hurt and yeah. needs medical attention. Imagine you're the parent and the nurse calls you up. Hey, so uh, he fell down. Busted his head wide open, mm. blood everywhere. Good news, Elmer's glue dries so <laughs> oh, quick. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Look, yeah. he, he he may be unconscious, but he, listen, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I'll be honest, I didn't get to that point in the nursing school <laughs> to properly define consciousness at yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've got to work on that. I want to get meta, but what is consciousness? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is, when you think about it. Is he in the here and, and now? now? <laughs> yes. Are we? So, Are yeah. we? Anyways, your child's in the emergency room. <laughs> Click. That's funny. With the provisional doctor. Doctor, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they, they apparently have been doing a, a thing on licensing. Uh, they opened the stores for teachers of special education, teachers of English as a second language uh, to hopefully get their... Um, they're licensing quicker. Gotcha. It's frustrating because those are, you know, two of the most needed professions. They are two of also the most specialized professions. To mm -hmm. be a, a, uh, a special education instructor, man, you got to have patience. You got to know what the heck you're doing. You got to have an exponential amount of classroom management. Mm-hmm. And yet we're lowering that requirement, you know, because these kids, to me, need mm. the most yes. uh, qualified teachers. Yes. They need the most professional assistance mm -hmm. in a professional environment. Yeah. And we're literally deprofessionalizing. Yeah, we are. That's, or is that's concerning. As a parent, yeah. I would be concerned. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, as a parent of a, a special, special education child. student, yeah. I, I would be concerned as well. Very much. Uh, so, all right, next one, teacher, <laughs> this one. Boy, I forgot this was on the Teachers in the News today, but I loved reading this one. A teacher's fired after not going to work for 20 years. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that would do it. Uh, that would do it. Uh, uh, how many warnings did they get? <laughs> I don't know, but apparently this is an Italian teacher who finally lost her teaching job after missing 20 of the past 24 years of work. Yes, you read that right. Apparently, she was initially fired in 2017 from a Venice area school uh, for absences, but she she sued 
And in 2018, they ruled she must be returned back to the classroom. It went all the way to the Italian Supreme Court. And last week, they overturned the reinstatement by rejecting her argument that she had a right to teach. Apparently, the students also have something called a right to learn. <laughs> and oh, yeah. When you're not there. Uh, she says she was unsuitable for the job. But, uh, yeah, apparently she claims she had papers to prove her story. Uh, when a reporter at the Italian newspaper reached out, this is this blows my mind. I'm sorry, I'm at the beach right now. Oh, wow. I'll reconstruct the truth of facts in this absolutely unique and surreal story. I don't answer questions from journalists thrown around that wouldn't do justice to the truth of my story. How did she miss these 20 years of work? Apparently, she just consistently had excuses. So apparently this teacher taught philosophy and literature and over 20 years <laughs> used holiday time, sick time, travel to conferences, personal time, family reasons, and missed two decades on the job. Students say when she did show up for work, she had no interest in teaching, refused to take part in the class, was distracted by her phone. Sounds like she was a student. Yeah. And uh, also complained that she was not prepared or attentive during class and her lessons were confusing. Bro, we just proved that one guy right. You don't need to go to college. Or, or work. <laughs> or work. <laughs> you can just exist. Exist. I and think get paid. That's just, how do you go 20? How do you go one year? If I went one month of fabricating like time off Shh, and bro. family reasons, <laughs> 20, 20 years. years. Uh, but that's yeah. what you call finessing the system, <laughs> man. She taught philosophy. I wasn't there, but was Was I? I? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. To work or not to work. I will not. I will not. <laughs> and see. Yeah. Used holiday time, sick time, travel to conferences. Can you imagine? They paid for conferences for her. They paid for her to personal go. Time, it's for her not to family be Family reasons. Oh. oh, my gosh. I don't know. I, I That just blows my mind, but I thought that was hysterical. Uh, all right. And this this last one here, before we get into the last topic I'm going to discuss, mm -hmm. is uh, there was a teacher, this is in New York Post, says, I was fired from teaching after a jealous colleague reported my bikini pics. Oh. And I thought to myself, yeah, there's more to this story. Has Especially to be. when you're reading the New York Post. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, I was fired for teaching after a jealous colleague reported my bikini pics. So then I read... A former teacher was fired from her classroom after a jealous colleague reported the bikini pics, and apparently she has no apologies and has learned to love her physique. Wow, this is oh. a great, empowering story. Yeah. Anyways, it was reported that she instructed students to call her Buttercup, a nickname she used on her OnlyFans account. Oh, no. Okay, so there is more to this yeah, story. There, yeah. Yeah, apparently she'd been sharing sul sultry selfies on her OnlyFans outside of school hours uh, and uh, was fired for it. Okay. Yeah, okay, so that's not the story that mm -mm. the headline gave, but okay. Uh, but apparently a year on from her firing this uh, particular uh, model I'll, I'll use that loosely mm -hmm. uh, said that it was a blessing in disguise she made money from her first month on OnlyFans more money than she did during her entire teaching career I believe that. I believe that, I, too. I believe that. Uh, and apparently, you know, she's doing well on there. You know, you try to read this. She said that a jealous co-worker did report me to my boss and stated that I was posting bikini pictures on social media. Well, she was. She was. And uh, apparently these bikini pictures had a link to go along with them. They sure did. And these bikini pictures were not just bikini pictures, but very tiny bikini tiny bikinis. pictures and yeah. very revealing mm. yeah so um you know you sit there and you go okay i the pictures that i am looking at right now mm -hmm. i cannot uh, share you uh, cannot and the reason i but the funny thing is is they're on her instagram they wow. and they were on her instagram okay a public instagram uh while she was teaching so Oh, here's a quick question for all of us non-teachers sure. out there. Mm -hmm. You guys have certain rules that you can about what you can and cannot do publicly and what you can show. Uh, you have ethics, Eth gotcha. and you also have some guidelines from gotcha. social media policies. So let's say it was a man, reverse that. Uh -huh. He had pics of himself in swim trunks, but he had a shirt off. Yeah. How would that be viewed? I don't know. I think that's a society thing. Got it. You know, I think Got that it. It, it is it is a workplace thing. Because I'm just trying to figure out. It also it, is a society it, thing. Is it, a, is it truly because she was in a bikini or is it because she's a woman and looks good? Uh, well, I mean, I'll, I'll answer this. Uh, there is the teacher, um, and I'm trying to, uh, what's his name? Nick something. Uh um, Nicholas Froney. Nicholas Froney. Okay. So Nicholas Froney is, uh, works out a lot. 
Okay. And he's an attractive guy, mm -hmm. very ripped. Yeah. He posts shirtless pics all the time of him at the gym. You know, I don't think that that's necessarily inappropriate. No. Uh, but then again, I do see comments that are inappropriate from, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> from uh, other teachers yeah, going, uh, Hello. Yes. <laughs> you know, so if he's being objectified in those photos, uh, is, you know, uh, her in a bikini, I mean, you can go to any beach and see it. It's a double edged sword, yeah, my man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Double edged sword, yeah. 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 I, yeah. So, I personally, I wouldn't have fired her just for bikini pics. No. And I wouldn't fire him. I don't think there's any reprimands that need to take place because guess what? That's how we are as a society. Yes. We wear bikinis and we wear, we go to the yes. beach and, and we have and you've lives. You've seen me in mine. Yeah. I look amazing. You do. Thank you. Honestly, James. Thank you. <laughs> I, my retinas have just recovered. <laughs> but no, I, I honestly think that there's, n I don't think there's an issue. I don't think but there should be. If, uh, you know, Nicholas popped up and was like, here's me working out, by the way, check out my OnlyFans account. Then it's like, mm. okay, okay, all right, all right. There's different motivation behind these photos yeah, now. Yeah, it's not yeah. just, hey, look, I'm, I'm physically fit and look how much better looking yeah. I am than self, other self -love. teacher comedians. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're going to get there, sweetie. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> gotcha. I do, I do push-ups, yeah. but apparently not like Nicholas. I, I need to do, do pull-ups. I need to not stop. Doing no, push-ups. No. I should have done push-ups during this, pro this you podcast. You should have. <laughs> you're, like, yeah, you're behind. <laughs> yeah, by I the am. Way. Uh, but no, uh, yeah. So I, I, again, I don't agree with the headline. Let's mm -hmm. let's say what it is. Teacher was trying to seduce, and also we brushed over the fact that she was calling, asking her yeah, students to call her the pet name that yeah. is her OnlyFans name. No, not okay. No, that's inappropriate. All right. Yeah. The last thing I want to talk about, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yan, okay, is um, there are teachers that are preparing to strike. And uh, this mm. is in the UK and also in LA. There was teachers preparing to strike. And somebody, I really like stuff like this. This was a, um, a reporter that actually met with the teachers and reported on it from their perspective, an okay. unbiased perspective. And he said, and this is the, the title of it, I spoke to teachers preparing to strike. Their trauma was palpable. Mm. Yeah, and it says staff are burning out. There's a lot of problems. Uh, cupboards are bare, uh, hitting students hard. We should feel shock. Is there a sense of deja vu here? And that's that's kind of the, the underlying theme is that all these teachers were striking, and um, he's saying that they're, they're really worn out. They're yeah. really, really at wit's end. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we see these strikes and we think selfish. Yeah. You know, that's sometimes the way it's meant to be painted. Uh, they want more money. You know, oh, it's just a money thing. A lot of times, teachers' number one complaint is not money. It's working conditions. Believe it or not. It's stress. Mm -hmm. It's the, the, the stuff that's being put on their plate. Lack of support and resources. Yep. And so when this reporter talked to him and said that, yeah, it looks like there's really not a lot of support uh, for teachers. Uh, there were slashed budgets, disappearing staff, end of school trips being uh, taken away, mm -hmm. uh, colleagues with dire financial situations, um, the teachers that were having trouble uh, teaching, especially this one is at an autism specialist school and said they had no support. You know, I mean, that, that kind wow. of stuff is where you need teachers the most and to see them actually being treated that way uh, it was, it's brutal. And, but I, I enjoyed this article. I'm just going to refer it. I'm going to say it and I'll probably put it on one of our posts. Okay. It was on the guardian. It was written by John Harris. I spoke to teachers pairing strike. Their trauma is palpable. If you get a second, if you are not a teacher and you listen to this podcast and you're like, I want to understand a little bit more of what they were going through. It's a great piece. I don't have time to read it all. I just wanted to bring it up. All right. And the very last thing that uh, we are going to bring the laughs. Oh, I, okay. I have brought an updated uh, uh, top 10 list. It's not even a top 10. This is a, a little bit of a comedic spin on it. Okay. Um, uh, about two years ago, if you've listened to the podcast for that long, which, by the way, I looked back, and we go all the way back to January 2019. Look at that. This thing hey. has been going almost four hey. years. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, man. Uh, but uh, if you listen to the podcast for a while, you may remember we talked about a story of a teacher, a kindergarten teacher, that invited the students to her wedding, and they came. What age group were the kids? Uh, kindergarten. Kindergarten kids. At the wedding. At a wedding. Yep. Yeah. Wait till that garter comes out. You oh, know, the, oh, my God. What? You get off of Mrs. Brown. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> oh, yeah, but uh, I I thought uh, we, at the time we joked about it. We're like, that is, you know. Probably not a good idea. I don't know. I, I yeah. love that she loves the kids enough yeah. to invite them into the personal life. But also, 
kindergartners at a wedding. Mm. Literally, like, I, I'm on the no kids, I'm leaving them at home mentality. You know, let's yes. have a party. They're going to yeah. be bored, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I'm sure the, the Cupid shuffle kept them busy. There you go. Uh, so, anyways, I decided at the time to come up with a, uh, you might be a teacher in the vein of Jeff Foxworthy. Ah. And, the, and the wedding, inviting kids to your wedding, you might be a teacher. Now, okay. I did it a few years ago. I found it. I wanted to revamp it. So okay. I added quite a few. I'm going to do the old ones, too. If you're a longtime listener to the podcast, you'll be <laughs> like, I remember that joke because they're good. Okay. Uh, and if you're, <laughs> if you're a longtime listener to the podcast, I'm also giving you new jokes. There I you wanted go. to revamp this. So there you go. this is in the vein of Jeff Foxworthy, okay? If the wedding dress is covered in glitter, but it wasn't made that way, you <laughs> might be a teacher. Yes. Yes. <laughs> if one of your wedding favors is a 50% off Chipotle coupon you got for Teacher Appreciation Week, you yes. might be a teacher. Yes. If the wedding has to start at 5 because you don't get off work from your second job until 4... <laughs> You might be a teacher. <laughs> if the screen printed napkins at the reception have an Etsy business card on top of them showing where guests can buy them, you might be a teacher. I know that person, by the way. <laughs> if the DJ is the network manager using speakers he got from the school assembly. Damn. You might be a teacher. teacher. There you By go. the way, I have had teachers yeah. that have had students DJ. Oh, yeah. Yep. And say, so, because uh, guess what? They're cheap. They're very cheap. <laughs> All right. Next one. If your preferred guest seating revolves around which school board members everyone voted for, <laughs> you might be a teacher. Okay. Dana, back. Yep. You don't get to sit near the front. No, you don't. I know you supported him yeah. at the rally. If <laughs> yeah. no one can throw rice at the end because your cell phone is in there after a student put it in the fish tank, <laughs> you might be a okay. teacher. That was good. That was very good. <laughs> If the dessert bar is all fundraiser, peanut brittle, baked cookies, and world's finest chocolate bars. That is the truth. You might be a teacher. Yeah, and I might be buying a whole box. <laughs> I am eating everything, yeah, let yeah. me tell you. If pour some sugar on me is both a song played at your <laughs> wedding and what you whisper to your coffee every morning. <laughs> you might be a teacher. teacher there you All go. right. And, uh, I got three more. Okay. If your honeymoon revolves around a federal holiday oh, because wow. you dread the work that comes from taking off an actual mm. personal day, you good. might be a teacher. That's true. If after the bouquet toss, you request the flowers back so you can get your deposit, <laughs> <laughs> you might what be a teacher. teacher. And the last one, the number one way, you know that you're a teacher at a wedding. Uh, if the bride looks like she's taking out wedding vows, but it's actually just more papers to grade, <laughs> you might be a teacher. Very nice. Yeah. Right? So the, the nice. teacher, I wanted to bring that one back. That's funny. I read it. I was like, man, I remember that one. I love that story. I don't know if she's still, I hope it's still a very happy matrimony. Mm -hmm. I hope she's still teaching. And it would be so wild to see as those kindergartners get yeah, older, bigger. you know, hopefully when they have their wedding, they invite their teacher, teacher. back. That oh, would be nice, pretty cool. Man. You, know? you never know. Sometimes I just forget yeah. about you. I wonder if she invited the kids to the divorce. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, they, they all sit in the courtroom. That's the man. That's, That's him. the man that mistreated Miss Smith. There you go. <laughs> yes, I don't, Funny. I don't know, but I would I would guess you'd have some good character witnesses. Uh, bam, bam. Yeah, anyways. All right, uh, James, what you got going on? Uh, I'm going to be doing more comedy. I'm touring right now, so if you guys want to hit me up, you can find all my tour dates on, at, uh, on IG at James Yon Comedian and also on Facebook, James Yon Comedian as well. Yep, DevonComedy.com for all the upcoming tour dates. I'm also on the board teacher store, mm -hmm. and uh, we are going everywhere. Yeah, you are. And don't forget also, uh, as school uh, openings approach, uh, if you need a professional speaker, if you need somebody who's a little different with uh, some humor to provide for your staff, don't hesitate to suggest moi, Mr. Siebold. I will happily come to your school, do the keynotes, the professional developments, and guess what? No icebreakers, no reading of the PowerPoints. Ooh. It's it's good. Trust me. There you go. All right. So uh, don't forget, share this podcast, rate it five stars, and we can't thank you enough for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for a new edition of Crying in My Car, a podcast for teachers.
Oops, there might be a clip up there. There might be a clip down there. If it's got our face, if it's other people's stuff, eh, come back. Don't don't click on that. You know, but us suggested things. That's us crying in my car. Devin Siebold, James Yon, board teachers. Watch, watch, watch. Um, new trailer for Indiana Jones. No, don't do that. Don't do that. 